greetings ladies and gentlemen welcome to educate today we're going to be talking about the division of gymnosperms i remember we've been talking about bryophytes pteridophytes now we are on gymnosperms so today we are on division gymnosperme so the most common examples that they like to use examples of gymnosperms are kikers ginkgo biloba wells chia as well as pine trees but most frequently the pine trees are used to represent the gymnosperms so whenever they put whenever they show you an image of a pine or a pine tree they are actually referring to gymnosperms just like in pteridophytes ferns are commonly used in your study guides as well as in bryophytes mosses are commonly used so in gymnosperms pine trees are commonly used so uh, notice that uh, examiners usually use pine trees to refer to gymnosperms so whenever you see pine trees and they want characteristics of pine trees they're actually asking you the characteristics of gymnosperms so now let us go we can just see these a uh, couple of examples of the gymnosperms which we have but then familiarize yourself more with the pine trees so now let us look at the characteristics of gymnosperms remember i said last time that we use this criteria to actually differentiate between the divisions under kingdom plantae does the plant have true roots stems and leaves does the plant have conducting tissue such as xylem and phloem and how does the plant reproduce as well so ladies and gentlemen in gymnosperms we have to answer each and every one of these questions so let's look at question one it says does the plant have true roots stems and leaves so ladies and gentlemen how do you actually uh, define the plant body of gymnosperms so when you are defining the roots the stems and the leaves you're actually referring to the plant body it's a plant body of a plant so it's the body of the plant it is made up of the roots the stems as well as the leaves so gymnosperms they do have true roots stems and leaves remember when you say that something has got true roots it means those roots have got conducting tissue within them and then they have true stems and leaves so from these images you can clearly see that these are the pine trees and the in the pine trees there are leaves here you can see leaves surrounding here as well as stems there are stems and there are supposedly roots which are anchoring this tree to the ground. So gymnosperms do have short roots, stems and leaves. Therefore, we refer to their plant body as not thallus. Remember when we say that something is not thallus, it means it has got true roots, stems and leaves. When it is thallus, it means it does not have true roots, stems and leaves. So let's go to question number two. Does the plant have conducting tissue such as xylem and phloem? Remember, xylem and phloem are, are, are the conducting tissue. When you say that they are conducting tissue, it means that they are responsible for the transportation of water and nutrients or photosynthetic products. So remember that for a plant to grow, it needs water. So the xylem is responsible for transporting water water to the plant as well as the phloem is responsible for transporting nutrients to the plant so now in gymnosperms vascular tissue or conducting tissue namely the xylem and phloem are present in pine trees so for the transportation of water and photosynthetic product remember that the xylem is the one that transports the water to the plant the phloem transports the photosynthetic products which are otherwise the food for the plant or the nutrients for the plant to grow hence you can see that the gymnosperms are big or like they're big plants in such a way that they get enough food and water because they have conducting tissue so now let us go to the third question how does the plant reproduce so when you talk about reproduction how does the plant make more of itself so gymnosperms form both male and female cones so gymnosperms use cones so you can see that these are pine trees and there are cones on the pine trees so when i'm talking about cones in this case i'm talking about these things here these things here these are cones so gymnosperms form cones you can see that in this kikite there are these orange cones so these cones we've got a male cone as well as the female cone so in those cones there there will be seeds that will grow inside the cones and then the seeds will 
uh, will be dispersed by the wind and then they will start to make a new to, to make another new plant so they use cones to reproduce and now let us go to the last question which is the most important do they need water for the production remember that uh, these are gymnosperms and gymnosperms it is important to note that their fertilization is not dependent on water so they don't actually need water for them to reproduce they don't need water for them to make more of themselves so instead what actually happens in gymnosperms is that the pollen is carried by the wind from a male cone to the female cone so remember that uh, we say that there are cones let's say this is the male one and then this is the female cones then there is pollen grains inside the male cones so this pollen grain inside the male cones is blown up by the wind to the female cones so when they reach the female cones they will start to make seeds and those seeds will now be responsible for the growth of a new plant or a growth of a new gymnosperm so gymnosperms do produce seeds which are considered to be naked so they can ask to you to explain in a question why are the seeds of gymnosperms referred to or considered as naked it is because they are carried at the naked scale of the female cone so remember that this is the female cone when it re when it receives the pollen grain from the male cone it will form seeds and then those seeds will just be like somewhere here at the scales at the scales of the female cones so these seeds are actually exposed that's why they are considered to be naked so if they ask you in a question that says two marks and they say why are gymnosperms or why are pine trees considered um to have seeds that are naked you can say that they are carried at the naked scale of the female cone and then the other characteristic is that the seeds of gymnosperms have wings to help with wind dispersal so you can see that these are the pine seeds so the pine seeds have got wings not like literally the wings that fly but then it is just an interpretation that when wind blows then it means that this seed will be easy to blow from the from the female cone so the seed will be easy to blow from the female cone because it has got this flap like wings which help with wind dispersal so when the wind comes and blows the seeds away they will be easy to blow because of these structures which look like wings yes so they actually fly so let's look at the plant body of gymnosperms so gymnosperms they have got well developed root system remember when we talk about plant body we talk about the root the stems as well as the leaves but in, in general in gymnosperms i was able to find the information ladies and gentlemen that um gymnosperms have got well developed root systems so it is the same thing as saying that gymnosperms have got true roots and the leaves have got a reduced volume which prevents ice crystals from accumulating and damaging the leaves specifically during winter what does this mean it means that the leaves of gymnosperms they don't actually have a bigger volume do you see this is a leaf this is a usual leaf as well as this these are the leaves of gymnosperms so you can see that these are bigger leaves these are smaller leaves so you can see that in this uh, image the figure six they've got needle like leaves of a pine tree so you can see that these leaves are very 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 small so they are reduced volume it prevents ice crystals from accumulating and damaging the leaves so during winter remember that there is snow and there is ice so if the leaves are so big there will be more ice that will accumulate here there will be more ice let me just put with the purple highlighter there will be more ice that will accumulate here but then if the leaves are so thin like needles so it means that ice will not be able to accumulate here because they've got a reduced volume so the plant will not be damaged by the snow or by the ice so the leaves of gymnosperms also have got a cuticle to prevent water loss through evaporation it means that um, the leaves of the gymnosperms do not actually just lose water unnecessarily so during evaporation or transpiration i could say the gymnosperms leaves have got a cuticle which prevents the water from just actually leaving easily so it actually retains the water not retains it retains the water so so the shape of the leaves are needle-like
and also uh, another characteristic is that um, in gymnosperms the Spotify generation is dominant when we talk about the Spotify generation it means that there is a production of spores so in this regard what are we referring to we are referring to this part here which I'm indicating that here they are pollen grains that are formed these are so, so some sort of type of spores so it means that the sporophyte meaning that they produce spores which will turn into pollen grain and that pollen grain will move from the male cone to the female cone and when they reach the female cone they will form seeds and those seeds will be naked here remember when we're talking about the cones we're talking about these these things here so uh, when they say the sporophyte generation is dominant, it means that they use spores to reproduce. And then the gymnosperms do not produce any flowers or fruit. You can see, for example, in the images of the examples of gymnosperms that we can see that there are no flowers here. All these orange things are cones of the gymnosperms. These are cones of the gymnos gymnosperms. So it means that they do not produce any flowers uh, unlike the angiosperms which we'll talk about later on um, they don't produce any fruit either so these are the characteristics of the gymnosperms so i would like to acknowledge that i've used the resources uh, from the study guide life sciences don't forget to subscribe to the channel tell your friends to stay tuned